You've probably heard a phrase on news broadcasts that goes, it's a story you'll only see here. Well, we begin tonight with just such a story. It's about a theater in Grand Center that has for decades laid in ruins and unseen by the public. But Kara Vanninger was allowed in recently and has the first in a series of segments on the sun's restoration. For years, this vibrant sign gave a sense of livelihood and activity to the Sun Theater. But it was merely a facade, masking the reality of what happens to a beautiful building when it stands empty for too long. Built in 1912, the Sun originally opened as the Victoria, a German language theater. Over the next several decades, it went through various reincarnations as a nightclub, burlesque house, and cinema. A century after it was built, and decades after its last use, the Sun Theater is being brought back to life by the St. Louis-based Lawrence Group. Now with the seats being removed, the building feels much better. When the, when the seats are all intact, it definitely had a very creepy vibe about it. Just the idea of people sitting in those seats and all of that. It, but they're empty. But now they're, yeah, and, and they're, they're... In July of 2013, Aaron Bunce, lead designer and project manager, gave me an early renovation tour, highlighting the balance between historical preservation and modernization. All of this scaffolding is being used to access all of the historical plaster so that we can make all of the molds, take that material off site, and replicate all of the old plaster that's been destroyed by water. One of the theater's most distinctive features is the beautiful plaster work that surrounds the stage. So on top of the scaffolding here, we've got uh, a little plaster factory going on right now. So Wamo Plastering is, uh, they're on site here. They have to make the molds in place and then take that back to the shop. And they'll use this corner piece to replicate the corner that was destroyed. So they'll just mirror it and, and put that back together. So the original proscenium will look like it did when the building was completed and originally opened. And then from those columns back, it will be a modern theater. We'll have modern seating, modern lighting. We'll do everything we can to, to get it back to its original grandeur. So. Now, do you have photos somewhere from the original? I mean, what are you working off we, of besides like the we bones? Do, we don't have photos. And that's kind of the challenge is that without having photos to know exactly how it looked, the historical process, they give us a certain amount of leeway. For example, in the lobby, where every single face was removed from this plaster design. Without photos or anything left to take a mold from, there is no way to successfully recreate the original look. What we come to an agreement on is that we'll, we'll just take that and have that be flat plaster, keep the scalloping that's below that. And Although the theater spent years at the mercy of the elements and vandals, some things did survive. The coat check room with its hooks and numbers, and a vault full of old tickets. This is, might be kind of a silly question, nope. but uh, any ghost stories? Since we started construction, we haven't, haven't really had any evidence of any ghosts. But when we came through and we're doing the photographs for the historical submission, the old changing rooms had, were pitch black dark, and we went in some of them, and there was decks of cards laid out. We're not really sure how they got there, but, uh, or how long they had been there, but it's pretty eerie. Turns out that the 100-year-old building had other strange stories to tell. At some point, somebody maybe had the idea that this was going to be a bowling alley or something. So there's, there was some bowling alley equipment, and we found bowling balls all over the building. What? So <laughs> it's been really interesting. To, you know, when I think they're all gone, then all of a sudden more bowling balls are found and show up, and <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty funny. So we think that... Somebody just thought it would be fun to take the balls from the top and just throw them down, and I'm sure they had a lot of fun. Phantom card players and rogue bowling balls aside, one of the building's most intriguing reveals was the level between the lobby and balcony. Once we get done with removing all of the walls of the space, we'll have all three arched windows will be fully exposed, and we'll restore those with new aluminum windows, and this room will be really grand. It's going to be really nice when we get done. So we're excited about this space. Although the building will be available as a venue, its main purpose will be as a performance and education space for the Grand Center Arts Academy. So we'll build a new wall here 
and it'll go all the way up and we'll build a new floor level huh. about 15 feet above where we're standing here. So the upper levels of the, the tiered seating will, will be tiered seating for the classrooms. We'll have two music rooms and then a drama room. Students will be able to sit up and then have a large flat section in front that they can act out. So it's almost like a small little theater for them. So that'll uh, it'll be really nice for the students. And we'll restore all those, those windows up there so they'll get some nice light in the space. Though the inside of the building seems to have suffered the most from neglect, the outside also needed some attention. So what we're looking at here is the old, original terracotta cornice of the building. The, uh, through the years, the terracotta support system, all the steel, started rusting away and, and essentially failing. And a corner of the terracotta collapsed about two years ago. We've taken pieces and they've been sent to a GFRC, which is a glass fiber reinforced concrete. So it's going to go back as a more modern system. The terracotta is very expensive to make and it's also very heavy, uh, part of the reason why it was falling down. So they'll make the molds, they'll look, the colors will be you know, nearly identical. I've worked on buildings that were younger than this building and were in far worse condition. And that's kind of been the beauty of restoring this building is that it's just built so well. The concrete work, the brickwork, the plaster work, the building is a tank. There are still many months of construction ahead, but already the sun is beginning to shine again.